What's up everyone, David Seven Skies here broadcasting from the Seven Skies Mansion. Today I have the pleasure to be a guest for Splice and Spinning and I'm gonna show you how I make my own samples just by using Serum. So without any further ado, let's jump into Ableton, open Serum and let's go. All right, so we have our first Serum open over here. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with uh, the most sort of complex um, element to make, which would be the kick. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change from the original saw to analog bass drum sine wave. So we're gonna lower the octave. I'm gonna go for a housey kick that sounds good, hopefully in G or E. Um, so. We're gonna lower the octave. A very important thing is we're gonna move this knob over here from 100% to zero, and this is gonna force Serum to start the wave always at the same point. We can decide where the wave starts, but the center one is usually really good. Let's shape the sound and add attack and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people use envelopes, and yes, normally I would use envelopes as well, however, LFOs in this case are a little bit more handy because over here we set the speed to BPM and we are at one quarter of a bar, which means that this space is exactly the space that there is between one kick and the other. So if we're using the LFO uh, to both modulate the pitch and the volume, what we're gonna have is an extremely precise control on the shape of our kick, and we're gonna know exactly how it's gonna sound inside the grid in Ableton. So we're gonna give attack to the kick, and I actually have my little preset, which is called kick attack, and we're gonna load that and drop it in the course pitch. Now, another thing we wanna do is set this to envelope. And as you can see, it doesn't sound that great. Reason is we are gonna have to set this to unipolar. And to do that, we hold shift and option and click over here. And now you can hear that it's unipolar. Now we set the amount to around, let's say 40. And we get this really nice click. Another thing that we can do is load another envelope that I already created and it's called attack full and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the level and I'm gonna turn it all the way down so the sound is not playing anymore and now we're gonna assign it to LFO 2 we're gonna have to once again set it to envelope and you can hear that now the kick kind of lost the click a little bit the reason is as you can see here, there is a little bit of a short, like a super, super short attack over here. And this is preventing our kick to be pointy. And the reason why I do that is because I wanna handle the click, the attack of my kick with the noise oscillator. Um, Serum comes with a lot of kick attack. They have 64. So um, I normally like kick 63, especially because, like I said, I'm going for this very uh, chunky house uh, kind of kick. So uh, kick 63 is usually really good. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to set the uh, noise oscillator to play the sample only once and not loop it. So we're going to have to click this button. And now we get a little click. I'm gonna pitch it down a little bit. It's already starting to sound like a kick. Let's open a distortion and I normally like diet 2. Uh, don't worry about this, uh, it's gonna sound better in a second. Let's put it around 50 for now. Turn the mix all the way down like 10% and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take envelope 2 in this case and this time is fine we don't really care about see exactly what's going on in terms of time uh, let's just make it really short and we can 
modulate the mix with it and this is gonna allow us to basically give the kick a little bit of distortion on the attack and then go all the way down this way we can have a bit of a saturated um, and distorted attack and then the rest of the body of our kick it's gonna be very clean now I feel like it's still a little bit too much I like this now what we can do is we can mess with because obviously this is just a preset that I made but we can mess with the attack of our kick we can make it interesting uh, and I'm just gonna try a couple things here but we can add like a double spike and this is going to make the attack a little bit it's going to give a little bit of a different harmonic it's going to make it a little bit more interesting by doing this we have a slower sweep not a fan especially with the kick in f so we might make it a little bit faster i like it like that I like the drive at 60. I feel like the attack, it's not bright enough. And what we can do is we can automate the gain on the high frequencies and have a little bit of a spike of high frequencies as well. Let's give it a little bit of body. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't like, I don't love the body just yet. So we can do some interesting volume automation on the body as well. We can open a sub oscillator and that makes it even fatter and super round. I really like this. And as you can see, especially because there's the distortion over here, um, every little change that you make changes the kick completely. Okay, now I'm starting to really liking it. What we can also do is have the attack a little bit quieter and modulate it again with envelope one. Almost there. There's there's one frequency that I don't love. And yeah, I feel like it's coming from the EQ. All right, I'm really liking this. And like I said, we can make it shorter, we can make it longer. Keep in mind that right now, the um, volume is mostly controlled on the um, oscillator A, the sub oscillator, as you can hear, is still going. Uh, it doesn't really matter because uh, when we export it, we can control it there. But for the most part, I actually really like this kick. Okay, so this is how I make my kick. Now, let me be clear. I have some super fancy distressor, compressor, and SSL. And for the final sample, what I would do is I would record it and then I would run it through all of these compressors, all of these outboards. Um, I'll probably further EQ it and maybe, you know, edit it a little bit. So keep in mind, in my normal workflow, there is going to be a lot more coming after this one. But what you just saw is a great starting point. So we got the kick out of the way. This is, like I said, the most uh, complex element when it comes to drums to designing drums with a synthesizer actually the snare can be a little bit more complicated but we're not going to focus on that today now the next element that we're going to look at it's the clap so let's open a new serum and let's do that claps are fairly simple and all we need is just white noise so we're gonna turn off oscillator a we don't need it and we're gonna load um let's just use j60 this is a noise that I actually did uh, using a Juno 60. Not too crazy. What we're going to use is once again LFO1. 
Uh, we don't necessarily need to have it on BPM, but we do need to set it on envelope. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some sort of an irregular shape, something like this. Actually, let's make it a little bit more obvious here. And once again, level all the way down and we're gonna modulate it with alpha one. Now, this is a little bit too fast. So we might wanna, we can try and set it to BPM actually, let's do that. So as you can hear, that crazy stuff that we did here, now it's helping us Fleming our clap. It's giving all this little transients. So if I make it super slow, you're gonna hear what I mean. But because we make the LFO very fast, your brain perceives it as a flam or just a lot of claps clapping at different times. Now, I don't like the tail. It's a little bit too long. This is pretty good. Let's tune it down a little bit. We can use a filter and band pass 12. We have to set it on the noise. And what we can do, it's giving a little bit of, giving a little bit of extra frequencies over here so that it has a little bit more body. So this is with, and this is without. Has that little bit of extra, extra frequencies on the mid highs. Now, back to our distortion. There's, I guess, linear, no, I think it's sine fold. Sometimes it's really cool. Makes it a little bit more, a little bit noisier. Something like this. Let's try and tune it back up a little bit. The cool thing about designing stuff with, uh, with synthesizers is that, you know, you can always go back, you can always experiment. This is actually pretty cool. Now we can maybe add a little bit of OTT. Let's see how it sounds, it might be super loud. I feel like it makes it a little bit too long. It's not too bad. We can do the same trick that we did with the kick. Maybe we can use the lower EQ to do something similar, but on the mid frequencies. This is kind of cool. Now I actually like it. I actually like it at one quarter. This clap is pretty cool. Um, actually, we can use the dimension. To make it a little bit wider. And in this case, uh, especially when the distortion is doing that much, you can experiment between having it before or after. I feel like it sounds a little bit more real if it's after. It sounds a little too noisy if it's before. I'd say this one sounds pretty good. As you can see, clap, fairly simple. Now we're gonna move to something possibly even simpler, which is a hi-hat. Okay, hi-hats. Once again, we're gonna turn off our oscillator A and we're gonna pick some nice attack from our noise oscillator and Serum has us covered because it comes with a few hi-hat samples in it. I think hi-hat slice 2 is the best one. Uh, once again, as you can hear, the sound is looping. 
we don't want that, so let's click this. I actually think slice three is better. Technically, this is already a hi-hat and, uh, you know, would be set. But um, there's a little trick that we can do and is to resample to oscillator A. So what we just did is basically resample our noise from the noise thing and we put it into basically a wavetable. Now it doesn't sound amazing, but what we can do is use it just as a little bit of extra layer. I want to make it a little bit more noisy, so we could try and use FM. We can modulate the envelope. The secrets with hi-hats is you want to have a little bit of hold. So as you can hear, it just gives a little bit of extra layer, a little bit of noise. It makes the tail a little longer. It's just a little bit of extra noise. And uh, since in Serum you can only have one noise, um, this is a neat little trick to just have that extra noise if you're using a noise already. Also what we can do is we can use a reverb filter because those sometimes are really cool. And they give a little bit of extra metallic sound to it. As you can hear, it gives it that metallic character to it. Always a little bit of distortion. I think tube is fine with this one. That's really nice. And you don't really want oscillator A to be too loud because otherwise it's just gonna sound like noise. But I would say this is pretty good. I have to be honest here, Serum wouldn't necessarily be my first uh, choice when it comes to hi-hat. I do have a TR909 by Roland. That's usually where I get my uh, hi-hat and I would layer them. I would use definitely use this as a layer because it has a nice sparkle to it, but uh, I always try to have some real hi-hat that I recorded or something from the 909 because it gives a little bit more of a authentic character to the hi-hats. But uh, I would say this is good enough for hi-hat, especially considering that we're only doing things in Serum. Let's move to something really, really fun, which is shakers. So shakers, once again, all we need is noise. Yeah, that's just the J60 again, just because I made it. <laughs> so what we're going to need again is a shape that I saved because I use it all the time. Uh, there's two different ones. I'm just going to show you shaker one and then gonna show you shaker two as well uh, sorry shaker one bar so shaker one is a very simple shape I mean as simple as it gets when it comes to a uh, shaker and what we're gonna do is actually a shaker loop we're not gonna make a single shot with uh, with this one so we're gonna take our LFO actually let's change the song to 126 BPM and let's hold our note. Now, in this case, we want to set it to trigger because we want our LFO to loop. If we set it to envelope, it's only going to play once. Well, if we set it to trigger, it's always going to loop. And as you can hear already, we get this shakery sound now it really just sounds like noise uh, so if we pitch it up a little bit it should help already and with the shaker you can really go crazy what we can do is we can basically automate a bunch of stuff with this lfo we can add more distortion we can also control for example the filter And 
the EQ in this case is very, very important because there's a lot of low frequency that make it sound like it's noisy. Well, if we... We cut all the lows and we do the same trick that I did before with the kick. We get this nice groovy sound. Um, another thing to just make it a little bit more full, um, we can use a chorus. And we're not gonna set it at 100%, I just wanna program it right now just to hear how it sounds. Then we can turn the mix all the way down a little bit lower. That just gives a little bit of that stereo image that it's always nice to have. And then we can use dimension again. We can also experiment with different noises. I actually like bright white a little bit better. What we can also do is we can copy this LFO and instead of using LFO1, we can make a copy and we can make it a little bit shorter. This way, it just gives a little spike. Also, you notice here, I left a little bit of volume on because I don't like when the, um, when the shaker cut out completely, but this might be still a little bit too much. As you can hear, there's a little bit of sound that's bleeding in, which I think it's pretty cool. It helps with the, with the flow. This is a little bit too choked. This has more flow, more bounce. I like this. Now this is one loop, let's call it that way, that I made. Um, there's also this shaker one bar, which has a little bit more of a rhythm to it. And we obviously have to set it to one bar. This is really cool. Uh, I feel like for this one, keeping things simple is kind of uh, the best uh, for now. But yeah, so this is the shaker. It's very, very simple. But what I'm going to do, especially considering that we're going to create a little loop after I'm done programming all these sounds, is I'm going to duplicate this um, instrument, but I'm gonna change the noise and there is, it's in the organic, there is this sound that is super cool, it's just called paper bag. And I love how organic it sounds. It's just super cool. So if we start putting down a little loop, it's just gonna be something very simple just to demonstrate how everything sounds. Let's just start with shaker, doesn't really matter where you put it because it's just white noise, so it doesn't have a note in this case. So if we layer it with the paper bag, it just adds that extra layer of crunchiness and, I don't know, organic stuff to it that I really, really like. We can go back and we can put down our kick um, we said that I wanted to have it in F. Now we have our clap. Put a small clap over here. Last but not least, our hi-hat. Now I don't super love the hi-hat like this. I feel like it's, I don't know, a little bit too somehow low in tone. So I might try to increase the pitch. I also feel like the shakers are, are a little bit too loud. It's also a little bit too noisy. 
what we can do is we can put LFO tool on our shakers just to give it a little bit of bounce. Same thing on our paper bag. And we can also add another hi-hat. We can make it a little bit shorter and a little bit different. Like this. We can make a close hi hat just like this. And we can do a little bit of a different rhythm. And then always add a little bit of swing to it. Uh, what, I'm using norm what I normally use is notator. We can go with 16C. Let's try. We can create a little bit of a little rhythm, just something that just gives movement. I like everything, I just don't love the hi-hat, so I'm gonna try and make it a little bit better. Also, just remember I didn't cue it, so that might make a lot of difference. All right, I think now it sounds perfect. Now everything should be a little bit quieter because I like the kick to be the loudest thing. Just a little bit of reverb on the clap. And I feel like the kick could have a little bit more attack. All right, one last thing. Feels like the sub is really good, but it makes the click kind of disappear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make I'm going to modulate with a very, very tiny, slow attack on it. As you can hear now, it gives space to the attack, but it still gives that nice body. And yeah, I really like this. Okay guys, this was uh, probably longer than it should have been, um, but you know me, I talk a lot. I try to explain as much as I can. Um, once again, all this stuff would be normally rendered to audio and then run through a bunch of compressors and stuff. But this is basically how I design my sounds. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something new. Also, thanks Splice and Spinning for having me. Um, this was awesome. Really happy to be part of this. And guys, I hope you're staying safe. From me, David, Sevens guys. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.